Hello everyone. Today I want to speak about settings and, and configuration within Meerkat because Meerkat has quite a lot of features that you can either turn on and turn off and it's extremely user configurable. So let's quickly have a look of where you can find these and where you can speak, can um, play with these and to see whether the different settings are more to your own taste and your own workflow. So let's have a quick look. Once again, you do have here the very top, the design, modify, and settings part. We'll speak about laser configuration in a bit, but let's first speak about the different settings for Mikat. The main setting that you want to change is actually language. You can even choose this uh, here over here. There is a menu where you can choose between different languages. There are um, the language quality or translation quality differs a bit. The German one is actually rather good. Um, Portuguese isn't that bad either. Magyar is as well okay. Italian has just been updated. The others may actually be a bit behind the, the latest developments. And hopefully someone will find some time to help and contribute to Meerkat by looking after those translations and provide the appropriate information how to change that to make it better. Okay, but for the time being, we leave it in English. You do have here the preferences window. The preferences window, if you open up with that over here, is providing you with a couple of basic choices. The first one being is, okay, which units do you want to work in? Um, I have my Mucat here working in millimeters. You may come more from an imperial background. You want to work in inches. You can choose the language. We just spoke about that. You can choose whenever you are importing files which have no native resolution, which resolution it should take. You have a couple of informations over here for input and output and um, something additionally. I will speak about those in a second. But just the basic look and feel right now. Here you have the different general information about how Meerkat should behave from its look and feel. Here in the classification tab, you have everything which is referring to the automatic classification. So the assignment of elements to burn operations. We already saw a couple of videos on that one. You can actually choose between a very automatic mode where it be behaves much like other programs and automatically assigning based on the color um, elements to either cut, engrave, or rust operations, or I can state, okay, no, that is not something I do want to have. I know exactly what I'm doing. Everything should be switched to manual, which for instance is not classifying after a color change, and you just need to manually drag and drop elements into an operation or between operations. So let's go back to automatic for the time being. Um, yeah, there's maybe one thing I wanted to read um, for two weeks. Exactly. This was a very um, interesting and very helpful um, option, fuzzy color logic. If you know K40 Whisperer, then you know that everything which is red is going to be cut. Everything which is blue is going to be to be engraved. Everything which is um, black is going to be rasted. So. If you do draw something, sometimes you recognize um, that the colors that you're having are very close to a, a pure red or a pure blue or a pure um, black. And it's not e easy to distinguish why certain elements are treated differently, especially if you are, have used an, a third party program like Inkscape or others. Sometimes you may have not chosen the pure red or the pure blue or the pure. Um, black color. So in this case, you can state, okay, well, I do accept reddish or bluish or blackish colors to be assigned to that. And with the information that you have over here, there is a, a color co um, a numeric code assigned to it. Zero is you need to be very, very exact. It needs to be pure red. It can be, needs to be very red. It could be nearly everything apart from red and so and so forth. Maybe you want to play around with that and you see whether this is helping you. So then you have the GUI section, which provides you with a quite a lot of different um, opportunities to change the look and feel and the behavior. Um, 
within Meerkat. The newest version over here has something which is, is new, which is called Mini Icon. And I just want to quickly draw your attention to that. I'm just creating a try a shape here. Doesn't need to be to be nice. So you see um, a new information has been added to the tree. And um, even if it's close, it's not exactly representation to small icon over here, what we have drawn. But make can make that even um, clearer if I use a polygon to triangle. And you see over here it has the very same icons. It uses standard icons. If you click on this one, it will do one thing whenever you are going back to this one and drawing a new element. It's I think it's not going in. By definition, then a pure view, a real preview of the element is going to be drawn. This is nice, but um, it's taking away a bit of time. So that's the reason why this is normally turned off. Anyway, um, Mikit will save Windows positions. So for instance, if I open the preference, close the preference window and open the next time, It will reappear at exactly the positions that I'm having over here. So that's a safe Windows position. You can have something about the wheel, the mouse wheel, how it should behave, what it, it does. It will state whether um, it's going to display this, this color bar over here, or whether it's not going to do this. Most people find it, find it helpful. If you find it annoying, you can turn that one off. You can speak, speak about the different zoom factors that are standardly um, applied when you are loading in from something. You can, let's go quickly go to colors, even change the look and feel of your, um, of Meerkat's canvas and the different elements over here. So for instance, I want to have the bat appear in a very whoop, ugly green. I can change that the grid should appear in an even more angry green, then it can have yet another watermelon color assigned to it. So you can have really a fruit salad of colors. You can reset them to your liking, as set them to liking, or you can reset them to the standard defaults. So have a look at it, what you really like. The scene here, um, over here, contains information about um, the behavior. For instance, if you have locked elements, I quickly show you that for a moment. If you have an element over here, you can state that you want to lock it. That indicates that it, it's going to be prevented from manipulations. So then you have a small L appearing over here. If you click on any other element, you can change the size, you can change the, the orientation and so on and so forth, but a locked element is not allowed, it's not allowing to do anything with it. So that's sometimes very useful if you have a very um, relevant and sensitive part of your design that you want to protect from unwanted changes, just lock that stuff and it will be ignored. Still, it can be moved around. If you even want to prevent stuff like that, whoop, that is just not going to happen and stuff like that. We spoke about snap options in another video, um, Very, the very same thing that you see over here, um, and so on and so forth. So that gives you an idea what you can change. You just want to play around with the things and see you if and how um, Mikit is changing its behavior. By the way, whenever you are leaving your mouse um, over an option, um, there is a tooltip appearing. Let's do that again. Staying OK, open windows at the same place where they were last closed. Or for instance, here, disable tooltips. Well, this is exactly that thing. If you are uh, annoyed about having those tooltips appearing every now and then, you can disable them and so on and so forth. OK, so much for general settings with Meerkat. So let's now go back to our lasers. This is the second part of the configuration, which might be of interest. You do have an opportunity over here 
to generate additional devices. Your standard device is the M2 Nano, which is the, the name of the board for your K40 laser. But you can add additional devices of a different um, family of lasers. So if I create a new device, I can, for instance, add one of the multiple Gerbil lasers, which are mostly the diode lasers that you find nowadays, which can be assessed. You can create a other device, which is the code name for a fiber laser, which is also quite helpful and quite interesting. And you do see what I have done this. Um, a new the change of the of a scene has taken place. So because the different lasers do normally have different bed sizes, so while the M2 Nano, with a double click, I can switch back to that device. It has normally a, a bed size of 310 to 210 millimeters. Your mileage may vary. You might have a slightly bigger or a slightly smaller bed size. Um, other lasers, like um, fiber lasers, only have a, a, an area of about 15 by 50 millimeters, some 30 by 30 millimeters, depending on the model you have. Okay, but now that we have opened the um, configuration element, which is make that slightly bigger that we can see more. Here you have the information about the laser name. You can change it actually to something different. So my K40, for instance, it will give an information what kind of board you're having. Don't change it unless you know what you're doing because these are the different the revisions of the um, different laser boards that you have for the K40, depending on the age of your um, of your model. I think the new M3 board is quickly to be added to this. It actually is already working with K any uh, with the current version of Meerkat, but it's still being um, considered to be an M2 board. You do have information about bed size. So, for instance, I can change that to say, okay, well, my laser bed is 320 millimeters. And the height, unfortunately, is only 190. So, in this case, while you are typing, the changes are going to be applied. So, for instance, go back to 195 millimeters. Okay, you see the bed size has changed. You do have the opportunity to change the scale, which is applied to everything you're doing over here under the hood. The reason being is if you have, for instance, um, changed the stepper motors, you might need to apply a different value here. For a regular machine, which hasn't been adjusted, uh, modified in any form or shape, or which still have appropriate belts, which are not too loose, one here and one here is the right scale factor to use. The setup over here is um, providing you additional options. I would encourage you not to play too much with them and just have a look at them and to see whether the things that you are seeing over here might help you to adjust your own workflow. Interestingly enough, is something like that. You can adjust warning levels. So for instance, your machine shouldn't um, be provided with a speed higher than whenever you're having a cut operation at 10. It's because everything be, um, above the 10 will provide you with um, something which is unuse, unuseful and is not providing the, the, the things you want to do. So for instance, if I do over here, you see you have done that. I have had a cutting operations with a 12 millimeter speed earlier. And in this case, it gives you a warning stating, well, that may be slightly above your parameters that is that are sound for your machine. So if I turn it back, then you can actually play that and just to make sure that you're not accidentally applying parameters to your operations, which might be out of scope and out of range for your machine. Default actions is a bit more elaborate that I think deserves a um a video of its own because you can do quite a lot of sophisticated things with your machine and display options. The interesting thing is that you can actually apply or generate, not apply, generate multiple versions of your machine which are virtual. 
So I can add another Lee Studios, which is the, um, the, the company which has generated the K40 boards, the M2 Nano boards, boards. I can have another one, which will actually still use the very same USB setting, but you want to have slightly different parameters. So for instance, okay, well, I have done now something different. I have, um, for instance, a rotary in element, or I have a different laser bed because I've um, added certain things to it, which have already some um, relevance over here. So you can apply different parameters. And that helps you then to generate different lasers with different configurations at the very same time, still based on the same physical machine. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you. It was a, just a rather long video. Thank you for your patience and, and bearing with me babbling along and see you next time.